Hello out there, it's Wednesday 13, hundred dollars and you're watching the Crane Podcast. Hi everyone and welcome to the Crown Video Podcast. I'm joined by uh, Wednesday and Joey from the Murdoch's. How are you gentlemen? We're, uh, we're excited to be here. Excited, very excited. Come on, you can be a little more excited. No, uh, I've been waiting the whole You better! You better be excited. <laughs> Hi. No, we're excited. Hello. So, this week's Crown Rank team, we uh, go on the set of your new dirty video. It's dirty. Yeah, do you want to kind of tell the kids at home, in case they haven't picked up this week's issue, so what it entails. It's for Mark, your new single, My God, Place Alone. Yes. It's, uh, it's dirty. You want to go for it? Yeah, go for it. Uh, I always go for it. Get in You're better! Get in there! Do the front match. Yeah, get out of No, the, the video idea we had for this, uh, it was really weird. Like, normally there's treatments and stuff that go around back and forth between the label and stuff. And, uh, and it was a thing where I just, you know, Joey and I started talking about it. I was like, we're like, Man, fuck the treatment. Let's just, let's just make a performance of the band. And when I called it Paul Brown who did, who did the video, I was like, you know, I, I said, I don't really have a treatment idea or anything. I was like, I just see this room that's just almost bubbling black. And we, before we even decided anything about the whole way we did in the video. And uh, it was, you know, it was all said and done. The video was the quickest video we'd ever done. The most fun we've ever most done in the video. Yeah. And we just I covered know, ourselves in all this. Like, most of the time, bathing afterwards. Like, Actually, that. it came out pretty good. It was kind of like washing black hair dye out your hair, but it just took a lot longer. It was actually really good. That was the longest shower I ever took. Yeah, it took about two days. To get that lost. We actually did everything off. Yeah, but, uh, but, it, but it was cool, though. It, uh, you know, it was something I haven't seen anybody do in a video. And it just, uh, we wanted to bring the song to life. Have you kind of been watching Ghostbusters 2 as a day? I always watch Ghostbusters. I always watch Ghostbusters. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I'm always watching Ghostbusters, but it really didn't make me do it because it's pink. <laughs> pink and we'll go with us right now. No, no, yeah. loving, loving the sort of uh, yeah, the, the new black look. Just the right. Yeah, I mean, that whole thing before, you know, it wasn't we ditched it. It was just, you know, we started doing it and it kind of cut the pot on. And we came back around, we just didn't want to be, you know, look like idiots and try to repeat ourselves and go, oh, okay, Joey, you're all one eyebrow on again. And, you know, just, we, we want to do something different this time. Going back and trying to redo it the way it was before would have been easy and just it came off looking done, I think. So, so my dog place alone, some people may have already heard it on the internet, it's from your second album, Moon and Children Last, uh, and it's kind of indicative of a new, heavier direction. Yeah, this guy. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, uh, my Dark Place Alone, actually, uh, we were actually, we had the record already done, and uh, the song we did at, actually at the last minute was a song called Chapel of Blood, it's the first song. Um, off the record that I wrote at the last minute, and um, you know, I gave it to Wednesday, and, and uh, you know, I, you know, I, I recorded the drum tracks, I recorded the guitars, and everything. We got it all done. You know, and, uh, there's no lyrics or anything. Yeah, nothing. The you know, melody, nothing. Just so we, we tracked that song. We we're like, oh man. So like, there's a real dark, uh, heavy element to the record, and this is right when uh, the Super Star Chris was going to back everything up. And uh, you know, it's like cleanup day, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, I had this other song that I wanted to do. And at the very last minute, I'm like, I'm like, don't back anything up. Keep the mics up. Keep everything up. I went in and I recorded. Uh, I, I've had that song for a long time. It was this. And I went in and I recorded it. And uh, again, I, you know, did the guitar track, the scratch track, you know, the combo and everything. Gave it to Wednesday. I had a, you know, the uh, first one all this stuff. And I, and I came back. And, they had all these crazy lyrics and like we went in and we tracked it. So that song was the last song we did for the record. Yeah. And literally nothing came up for the first single. So uh, it's kind of like um, you know, it's a very personal song for I'd say about like it's like the past five years and uh, you know it's, it just kind of shows like a new direction of uh, kind of what's going on. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a little it's a it's a cool song. Uh, it's one of those last minutes. Well, the video for me. They're very good. They're it's a dirty, dirty film. Um, I guess that's a, the obvious question to ask you guys. Like, how long, how come it took so long for the to kind of reconnect? So, it's been so much longer than banging a record every five or six days. Well, you know, I think it was a good time to a lot of the fans, you know. It's been, it's been, it's been eight years. But we're working down there. Anyway, we are. Knock it off down there! Trying to talk about ourselves! <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, back, back to us. Uh, what was your question? Uh, I could, right, how long it's, uh, uh, eight years, sorry. Um, for a lot of people, you know, it's, it, it, it has been eight years, uh, but the thing is, is, you know, for us, you know, you know, 
Jody's been doing the two Slipknot records, two full tours, uh, Corn, the Ministry, Ministry, Terracon, Roadrunner United, produced Paint of the Blood, Rock Zone Day. Now, uh, yeah, yeah. Rock Zone Day. I did, uh, you know, I did three solo records, uh, two country albums, and put a different rock and roll band together. So it's like we were busy, and you know, he was touring on, on his level, I'm touring on mine, but we still constantly toured non stop. I mean, I was touring 10 months out of the year. And, uh, you know, so for us, that you know, even though it's been eight years, we've been so busy, uh, so it didn't, it feels like a long time, but not as long probably to the fans. But we talked about it for years, and it's, you know, but it really became like more serious in the last year we started talking about it. And then six months prior to going into the, the studio, it was official, we were talking about it, and uh, you know, there's no way we could have made this record uh, a year ago or uh, right after that. It would have been Beyond the Valley Part 2. It had been fun and cool, but the thing is now we've taken our time to revamp the vision of the band, the idea, and whereas before we just just kind of just, you know, fun is crazy, let's just go crazy hell and do the whole thing. We're still going to do that, but it's more, we have more of a, a target. It's way more focused. focused. It's, um, you know, we have a, plan, a different band. We have a plan of attack as opposed to last time. We were just like, 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 Way more focused. There's more sense of uh, direction in the band, and you know, when I was uh, talking to Wednesday about doing the band again, I'm like, this can't be that fast. I mean, this, this has to be serious. And it's, uh, you know, like I said, like Wednesday was just saying, you know, we're always going to have fun, and we always have like, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the fun element of the band. But yeah, yeah, with the we'll sense of being, yeah, that, that's still there. But I mean, I think uh, people would be uh, pleasantly surprised if. Uh, you had some uh, celebrity panels like Amps, you know, like, like so on with your um, things from MySpace, sort of picture of Mick Mars from Molly Crew. Yeah, laying down some licks. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a really cool thing. It wasn't anything that we had planned like prior to the studio or anything at all. It was, um, it was basically, uh, you know, we just we just tracked a song called Bloodstained Valentine, and uh, the Mad Manager, who I've seen the Mad Manager videos out there. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's kind of like our house dad, tour manager, taking care of us in the studio. And, uh, so we had some schedule every day, breakfast and then we eat dinner and whatever. So we're, we tracked the song Blood St. Valentine. Joey and I were in there eating dinner and, you know, uh, we were just talking about the song and I was just like, like this song kind of, you know, I was like, it kind of has a big Mars kind of vibe for the solo. We didn't have a like, solo work out yet. Yeah. And then the man manager hears this and he's like, well, just fucking call him up, you dummies. And, uh, and I was like, all right, we can call him. He's, he's like, all right, so he walks outside, smokes a cigarette, comes back in and said, yeah, he's down, I'm singing the songs, he'll be here on Saturday at 7 o'clock. And that's pretty much how it was. And he came in, total rock star, came in, top hat, four inch platform shoes, this, this hot young girlfriend carrying his guitar for him. You know, he was kind of, he was kind of nervous, we're kind of nervous as well, so he came in and started telling some dirty, terrible jokes and realized we're all on the same page and went out to the studio. And, he buried his head in a Marshall amp and just uh, cranked up the tin. Like, I can't believe he just had his head in an amp like that. And he was more concerned about his tone and putting his stamp on it. It wasn't about money, it wasn't about anything like that at all. And that's what made it even cooler and even gave him more respect for the guy because he is this. I looked at him as one of the underdogs or the villains of rock and roll. You know, he was even like, you know, the underdog in Motley Crue. You know, yeah. like and to us, he was like the guy we looked at. He was like the president. He was a guy with black hair that was waiting to scream. Extreme evil, like to me as a kid, and to have him be a part of our record was just like, the blood. You know? Cool. Well, I guess so. The obvious question to ask you guys, being fans of everything horror, mm -hmm. um, you looking forward to the new Twilight movie? Yeah, man. We, we've already seen it. Big fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how much you like the Twilight movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've never, uh, I've, I've never seen it before. Yeah, so. Uh, Hey, you're you're telling me you like Taylor Watts' his face and spot me well with all of it. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I actually, I, I, I hear about the Twilight Zone, but I don't know any, anything about it whatsoever. He's clearly lying. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I see the posters and stuff. I, I don't know. It's like, it's like Harry Potter with vampires. Is that what it is? Yeah, pretty much. Right. <laughs> well, thank you very much for Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joey. And the Twilight thing, see you blew it.